This is an overview of My Active Items as well as configurable to-dos. My Active Items widget allows you to consolidate all of your employee tasks and approvals into one single widget. It displays a summary view of a user's open activities across all of your departments, and it only shows activities that a user has access to. Activities can include things like tasks that they have to do, requests that they've opened, whether it's HR or IT requests, surveys, as well as reservations if you are utilizing workplace service delivery. Each different activity type shows a count of the opened items. Quick Tasks shows an expanded list of records for the top or the primary activity, and the task cards dynamically size for ease of viewing. Configurable task filters allow you to configure different ways that employees can view their tasks, whether it's by type, by priority, um, tasks that are due soon, or additional options like even tasks that they're related to, or even perhaps learning that they have to do. Admins have the ability to configure multiple multi-level filters and personalize the filter experience with user criteria. So that maybe managers see some filters and individual contributors see other, see other filters. Employees can select on one or more filters and apply as needed. Let's take a look at this functionality. I'm logged in as a manager Maria and on my homepage here is where I see my active items widget. So I can see at a glance the tasks that I have to do and I can also see some other types of tasks on here as well, including learning tasks, requests, surveys, today's reservations, as well as journeys. You have the ability to define the primary task that you see here, which is automatically going to display that card information that we see below. Users can easily scroll through the tasks they need to do and also drill into more details here. When drilling into more details, this takes them to the My Tasks area. Across the top here is where we can see all of the various filters that have been enabled, enabled for this particular user. So Maria here can easily filter by the type of journey um, if she wants to filter for new hire journeys, as well as those due dates. On her tab here, she can also filter between completed um, as well as open tasks. So that was a quick overview of our active items widget as well as our configurable to-dos. Let's take a look at how we configure that on the back end. Now I've switched over as an admin who happens to be the portal administrator. To go in and manage your activity configurations, um, you simply go into the filter navigator and type in activity configurations here. This is where you can find activity configuration under the employee center in the filter nav. So let's drill in and let's take a look at configuring tasks. When I drill into this specific activity configuration, this is where I can decide if the activity navigation is going to go to an internal page versus an external page. I can also define what activity portal page I want this to go to. So in this case, we've said that all of uh, that my tasks activity configuration is going to go to my to do's page, which makes sense. I can also choose the icon that I want to use. And this is where I can set if it's going to be the primary activity versus a secondary activity. I can also define below if I want to turn on some advanced scripting, but we're going to turn this off for the purpose of today. Down below is where I can also set my activity configuration details. So if we flip back over to the portal here, because we are gonna go in and configure our task, this is where I can define what information I want to pull in at a glance when we're looking at this particular task that I have to do. So when I flip back over and create new, you'll notice that I have the ability to define that activity detail navigation. So for example, do I want it to go to, again, that internal page um, versus an external page? I can also choose if I want to include basic card mapping um, or if I want to do some additional scripting. So we're going to keep this basic today. I can also choose what table I want to pull from. So again, this is where I can easily uh, select my particular task configuration here and what additional conditions I want to utilize. Down below is where I select the fields that I want to input on this card view. So do I want to include a specific um, badge here? Do I want to include specific imaging? 
uh, what do I want my title to be? So in this case, maybe I want it to be my display name of that particular task. What description field do I want to pull in here? So maybe I want to utilize um, you know, the short description or maybe I want to pull in um, the due date of that particular description here. And then I have the ability to pull in some additional fields. So again, this is how I can go in and configure some of the details that pull up on this additional card. Now let's go in and let's take a look at configuring some of the to-dos pieces. So I'm going to drill into my to-dos configuration, and this is where I can define what types of to-dos I want to pull in my tasks area here. And we're also going to go in and take a look at configuring our filters here as well. So you'll notice that I have a ton of different tasks and approvals coming into my task box. So I can define if I want workplace approvals coming in, if I want compensation change approvals coming in from perhaps an HCM system, as well as document tasks or other types of approvals here. So let's take a look at configuring an HR task. When I configure the to-dos configuration for HR tasks, I have the ability to define certain conditions on what types of tasks that I want to pull in. So in this case, these are my filters to say what types of tasks are going to be pulled into my task box. So it's going to be those individuals that are assigned to obviously that person, those active tasks, as well as those ones that are in a state of ready um, or work in progress. Down below is where I have the, addition, the ability to pull in that field type. So this is essentially where I am saying what that title is going to be. So if we flip over here and we take a look at an HR task, this is where I can define what information I'm going to pull over. So it's going to be the short description that is pulling from that particular HR task. Now within my detail row tab is where I can define additional fields that I would like to pull in within this particular task. So you'll notice that I'm also pulling in the HR service name as well as the subject person name from the HR case table below. And so again, just showing you where that maps back, this is where I can see that HR service that is kicking off in that subject person name down below. Let's also go in and take a look at how I can configure what happens on an approval. We are specifically going to look at a compensation change request um, that is coming over from Workday. And we're going to configure what we want to see on that open request here. When I drill into the to-dos configuration, again, I have the, the same conditions that are pulling across the top here. Of course, I have my title row as well as my detail row, but down below, I also have a task configuration. So we're going to drill in and we're going to take a look at how we can configure the details that pop open on this page here and what those mean. By installing the delivered integration with Workday, we have a new table that we're able to pull from. So this is the table that is defaulting. Down below, we have the reference column of who it's going to be assigned to, as well as the reference table. Down below that, we also have three tabs, common information, primary information, as well as action. Our common information is going to be what is displayed across the top here. So we have request type, created date, due date, and state. If I flip over, this is where I can see the common information fields that I'm able to pull over here. Primary information is going to be my next chunk of data that we have down below. So I can see here that I'm pulling over some of the action information as well as who it's requested for and also the position, the effective date, and the employee visibility date as well as the reason. The action is where I'm going to be able to say what action do I want that person to take, whether it's an approve action, a reject action, or even a drill into the system of record. So the action piece is where I'm going to configure what actions I want them to be able to take. Lastly, let's go in and let's look at how we can configure these various categories as well as sub filters below this. Within my filter navigator, I go to my to-dos filter categories. This will take me to this page here. This is where I can define the various filters that I want to enable when individuals are searching for tasks that they need to do. So let's look at this task type one. I just turned this on to active, and when I refresh my page here, this is where I can see all of the various task types that I have the ability to filter by, whether it's workday tasks or SAP tasks or maybe documents that I need to sign off on. Within each filter category, I have the ability to 
to assign sub filters below here. So this is where I have all those different tasks that I was able to select from and the multiple levels that I could filter. If we drill into this workday task, I have additional sub filters that I can go in and categorize below. So this is where I can define what types of sub filters I want to enable and filter by when I'm drilling into workday tasks. Let's take a look at eSign tasks. When I drill into eSign tasks, this is where I have the ability to define who this is available for or not available for. Again, enabling certain conditions um, on various filters. Lastly, let's look at how we can enable certain filter conditions. So if I drill back into my filter list, I have the ability to also define if I want those tasks that were created within the last hour, the last four hours, eight hours, etc. So I can also put conditions on my filters as well. So let's look at a filter condition that was created within the last hour. When I drill into here, this is where I can see what fields we're pulling from, and this is created relative after one hour ago. So that will allow me to filter for any of those HR tasks that are pulling from the HR table that have been created within the last hour. So that was a quick look at my active items as well as configuring to-dos and the filters within to-dos. If you're looking for additional help, please visit the Employee Center Product Hub or check out one of our other live on ServiceNow events. We have a ton of great information around Employee Center Academies, Employee Center Office Hours, as well as specific office hours for our employee comms functionality and our quarterly Employee Center Roadmap webinars.